Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can move patterns between Illustrator and Photoshop. As you're working in Photoshop and in Illustrator, you may find it handy to switch patterns between the two applications. And we're going to see how to do that. I'm going to start in Photoshop and I'm going to create a very simple pattern. I have an image here that is 600 by 600 pixels in size at a resolution of 150 dpi. And I'm going to create a center mark for this. So I'm going to choose View and then New Guide. And I'm going to make this at 50%. And I'm going to choose View, New Guide and make one at 50% vertical. I'm going to draw a circle here and fill it. So I'm just going to grab my elliptical marquee, start drawing it out from the center, add the shift key to make sure it's a perfect circle and the alt key to make sure that it's centered around the middle point. And I'm just going to make it a fairly small circle because orange is my current foreground color. I'm going to press alt backspace or option delete to fill my circle with that color. And now I'll press Control or Command D, which is effectively deselecting the selection. In the Layers palette, I'm going to create another layer here, and I want to put a second shape on that layer. Now I want to do a five-pointed star, but there isn't a star marquee. I'm going to have to use the Shape tool here. So I'm going to select a polygon. I'm going to make sure that I have this option here set to Pixels. Now it doesn't look quite the same way in earlier versions of Photoshop, but the options are the same. You want Pixels. Now I want my shape, my polygon, to be five sides. So I'm going to select five. And from this drop down list here, I'm going to make sure that star is selected because I want to drag out a star rather than a pentagon. So now I'm going to click in the middle of the shape and start drawing. So I'm going to add the Alt key to make sure that it's centered. And I'm just going to rotate this until it looks like the star I want it to look. And I'm thinking that that is pretty good there. So I'm just going to let go. Now the star has come in at the same color as my circle. I don't want it to be the same color. So I'm just going to turn the circle off so I can see the star very clearly. I'm going to create this as a sort of blue colored star. So I'm just going to click on the blue color. Now I want to fill this star shape with the blue color. The easiest way to do that is to lock the pixels on this layer by clicking this icon here, it locks the transparent pixels. So now when I press Alt Backspace or Option Delete on the Mac, I'm filling only the filled pixels or any partially transparent pixels are now partially filled. So now I've got my two shapes. I want to push my star out to the corners so that it will repeat with the circle. To do that, I'm going to select the topmost layer and choose Filter, Other, and then do Offset. And this is already set to 300, 300, and that is half the dimensions of this image. It started out being 600 by 600, so I just have to set this to 300 by 300, set wrap around on, and click OK, and now I've got my pattern. Now, to make this a pattern in Photoshop, of course, we're going to do Select All, which is Control or Command A, and we're going to choose Edit, Define Pattern, and I'm just going to make this Star and Circle. Now that's now a repeating pattern that we can use inside Photoshop, but we can also take it to Illustrator. So I have it all selected here. I'm going to choose Edit, Copy Merged. So that's going to copy the whole thing and I'm going to take it into Illustrator. So I'm just switching to Illustrator and I'm going to choose File New and I'm just going to create a brand new document in Illustrator. Now my document in Photoshop was 600 pixels by 600 pixels. So life is going to be a whole lot easier if I make this document the exact same size. 600 by 600, click OK. It doesn't have to be the same size, but it will just make life a little bit easier if I do. I'm just going to choose Edit and then Paste. And here is my shape now, or my swatch here in Illustrator, and it's a Photoshop swatch. So with it still selected, all I need to do to create a repeating pattern from it is to pick it up here and drag and drop it in the swatches palette. And when I do that, it becomes a swatch in Illustrator. So now I can delete this 
shape because I don't need it any longer. And let's see how it will fill a shape inside Illustrator. So I'm just creating a shape. And I'm just going to make sure that I have my fill color selected here and just click on it. And now to resize it so we can see how it fills at a smaller size, let's do Object Transform Scale. And I want to transform my pattern but not my object. So I'm just making sure that Transform Patterns is selected. Transform Objects is not selected. I have Preview turned on so I can see what's happening here. And you can see that I've scaled it down to 20% at this stage and just click OK. So this is a Photoshop pattern brought into Illustrator and it can be used inside Illustrator. Of course, if we want to use it in future in Illustrator, we want to empty out all the other swatches from here. So I'm going to get rid of all of these swatches, leaving behind just the swatch that we want to use. Okay, so now we've got the swatch we want to keep. I'm going to open this fly out here, choose Save Swatch Library as AI. And this opens everything up automatically in Illustrator, exactly where my swatch should go. And I'm going to call this Star and Dot and click Save. Now in future, when I close this document, even if I don't save it, I, when I choose File New, and create a brand new document, you'll see that the swatch is not in the swatches palette and that's because it's not saved in Illustrator, but we've saved it. So I'm just going here to open my swatch library, open user defined and go and get my star and dot pattern and here it is. And I can just drag and drop it into the swatches for the current document and it's now accessible to this document. And we can do that for any pattern in future. So we've taken a pattern from Photoshop to Illustrator. Let's see how we would take a pattern from Illustrator back to Photoshop. Now when you go to take a pattern from Illustrator back to Photoshop, you need to carefully consider what it is that you're bringing with you. I'm just going to choose File and New and just create a new Illustrator document here because I have a pattern that I want to get access to and I already have it saved. So I'm just going to open a swatch library here that has a webinar pattern, a pattern I used in a webinar recently. So I'm just going to bring it into the Illustrator workspace. Now this pattern is a two dot pattern. It's very similar to our star and dot, only in this case we have two different color dots. Saved as a pattern in Illustrator, it looks like this, but Illustrator has a couple of bounding boxes here. This box on the outside is around the whole pattern piece, but the real repeating part of the pattern is this bit on the inside. And what we need to do is to get access to just that bit so that we can then bring it into Photoshop and use it as a pattern piece there. Now there are a few ways to do this. Um, one of them will allow you to recolor it back here in Illustrator and another one will just fix it as a ping file. Let's look at the fixing it as a ping file first of all. So I'm just going to select this inner shape here and I can get to it from the layers palette. So I'm just going to go and grab this shape here which is this inner box. I'm going to double click on the artboard and then choose here fit to selected art. And what that does when I click OK and then click away from this shape is it's sizing the artboard down to just the size of this innermost shape. So if we now export this innermost area as a file that we can open in Photoshop, we've got our pattern piece. So I'm going to choose File and I can choose Export or I could do Save as Web. Just going to do Export and I'm going to export it out as a ping image here. And I'm just going to call this Dots. Now the important part of this dialog here is this bit here and we need to click Use Artboards because we were saying to Illustrator we only want the area that's inside Artboard 1. We don't want the area outside Artboard 1 to be included and that's really critical that we use Artboards. I can select Range 1, in other words just bring it 
or just export our artboard one. It doesn't really matter because I only have one artboard anyway. But what is critical is that we do use that artboard and click export. And sizing and stuff I can do here if I want to. I've added a white background and click OK. So now we've got that as a pattern piece that is available for Photoshop. We'll see that in a minute, but for now, let's just wind back this Illustrator document. Let's go back to what it was when we first placed this pattern piece inside the Illustrator document. Our second choice for taking it to Photoshop is to crop the image to this inner shape. To do that, I'm going to take this innermost shape here and I'm going to move it up to the top of this group. And I'm going to make sure that I have this entire group selected. And then from the Pathfinder tool, let's just go and find Pathfinder with Window Pathfinder. I'm going to click Crop. And that's going to crop the shape to that innermost area that is now defining our pattern. And we can now choose Edit and then Copy. And we can take this to Photoshop. So let's go and select Photoshop. And let's choose File and then New. And I'm going to make a new document that is 600 by 600 pixels in size and click OK. Now I'm going to bring in the pattern piece that I have, the second one I made, that's on the Windows clipboard right now. I'm going to choose Edit and then Paste. Now because this has been copied out of Illustrator, I get various choices for working with this particular shape. And I'm going to select Smart Object and click OK. And the reason why I'm selecting Smart Object is that this Smart Object is now linked back to Illustrator. So if I double click here in this Vector Smart Object panel here in Photoshop, I'm going to open this Smart Object back in Illustrator which means that I can do things like change it around or even recolor it in Illustrator. So I've got this middle shape selected now. Let's go and choose a different color for it. I'm going to choose a pink color. Now if I go back to the shape and choose File and then Save, it'll be saved back into the Photoshop document. So I'm going to switch back to Photoshop and you can see that the change that we made in Illustrator is now embedded inside this Photoshop document. Now if we want to create this as a pattern in Photoshop, we're going to need to either crop the Photoshop document to the size of this Smart Object or just simply size the Smart Object to the size of the Photoshop document. Since our Smart Object was a square pattern piece, we can do this by just stretching this out to fill the entire Photoshop document. And we can do that because it's a Smart Object, so this can be infinitely resized because these are vector shapes inside Photoshop. Now with this layer selected, I can go ahead and create my pattern, Edit, Define Pattern, and click OK. And this is now a Photoshop pattern, so I can close that particular document. Let's try a new document. Let's create a brand new document, 2400 by 2400 pixels in size. And let's go and fill it using the fill layer, layer new fill layer pattern. Click OK. The last pattern in the list is the one that we have selected here. And I'm just going to scale it down, this time to say 40%, and click OK. And if I add a new layer to this document, let's go and fill it with white using Control Backspace, Command Delete on the Mac. You can see that we have our pattern that we brought in from Illustrator, recolored because it's a smart object and are able to use as a pattern inside Photoshop. Now there is one other Illustrator scenario that bears discussing before we leave this topic. I'm going back into Illustrator. I'm going to choose File and then New. Just creating an any size document, doesn't really matter. Now I've got my basic graphic lines open here. You get to them by opening up the Swatches panel. Choose Open Swatch Library and then choose Patterns. And we're using Basic Graphics and Lines. And I'm going to just drag and drop one of these lines in here into Illustrator. I want to have a look at it and its bounding box. 
Now this bounding box here is really essential because inside of that bounding box is some white area and you're going to need that to be able to use this shape as a repeating pattern in Photoshop. So you're going to need the whole piece to be able to take it to Photoshop. But let's just have a look and see what's in this particular pattern group before we take it to Photoshop. I'm opening up the group here. I'm just going to click off on some of these icons here to see what it is that we're losing when we click on them. You can see this is the middle piece of the pattern and these are the very edge pieces. So we don't really need these edge pieces. So I'm just going to grab those since I've turned them off and just drop them onto the trash can and that's removing them from the image. And what we're left with is the path that's all the way around this shape and the shape itself. So when we go to Photoshop, we want to make sure that we bring in this bounding box because if we don't bring in the bounding box, then the whole shape is not going to work as a pattern in Photoshop. There's not going to be the space in front of these lines. So I'm going to choose Edit and then Copy. Now let's go to Photoshop and let's create a brand new document in Photoshop. I'm just going to choose File New and I want this to be a square document because what I'm bringing in from Illustrator is basically square. So let's make it 200 by 200 pixels in size. This is going to be my pattern piece and I'm just going to paste this in with Edit and then Paste. And again I'm going to bring it in as a smart object and again I'm going to size this so that the bounding box here goes all the way out to the edges. I'm going to need all that space around the shape for this to be a working pattern later in Photoshop. I'm just going to click the checkbox here. Now that I've got this shape, let's choose Edit and Define Pattern and we're just going to call this Lines. I can trash the document now because we don't need it any longer. Let's do a new document. And let's just make it 2400 by 2400 pixels in size. And let's fill it with our pattern. Well, let's start off by adding a white background behind everything. So I'm going to choose Control Backspace or Command Delete on the Mac. Then I'm going to choose Layer, New Fill Layer Pattern. Of course, the pattern layer is going to be the one that we just created. And you can see that we've got these nicely spaced outlines, which we would not have if we hadn't been really careful about bringing in the space, the little bit of space above and below the lines. And we can create any value for scale here. We can scale them further apart or bring them closer together and just click OK. So there is some of the basic techniques that you can use to get patterns from Illustrator into Photoshop and from Photoshop into Illustrator so that you can use them in either program. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.